Yes, it sucks, but it is what it is. Those Germans, man, they just like to have their freaking e-licensor keys. That's the only way I could say. Hey, this is Brian from Logic Pro Hacks. How's it going out there in the Wonderlands, in the Badlands? Hey, guess what I got for you? I got Viana Pro 6, and I have it working really cool right now. And when I say really cool, I have Reason 10 working with Viana on a different computer imported into here. Here, I'll show you. Check this out. Let's go ahead and bring over my other computer here. Now, this other computer is remoted in, so I, I'm using this program called Microsoft Remote Desktop. You can get it out of the App Store from Mac somewhere. Just Google it. Google is your friend, dude, all right? So, you just double click on that, and we can get in the big screen here. All right, so this is a Windows 7 PC. And how this works is, you buy Viana 6 and you have to have a, well, can't see that. You have to have a e-licensor key. That is the only bad thing about Viana 6. For every slave computer, you need an e-licensor key. Not like a software key. You have to go out and actually buy a key from either Viana store or wherever you get an e-licensor USB key from. You can find them on Amazon. I found them pretty much anywhere. Like I, like I said before, Google is your friend. And they sell for about 35 to 40 bucks, depending on where you find them. Now, this is not about how to install a key or anything like this. This is basically how to get Reason 10 in. So I just wanted to make that note. You know, if you're gonna do three computers, you gotta have three keys. All right, so when you install Viana, you're going to have this. You're going to have this Viana Ensemble Pro 64-bit and a Pro Server, and you're also going to have one without 64-bit and one. So what you really want to pay attention to here is the server version. Don't mind these, because this is like if you actually want to run it from your computer and just run it by itself without the server mode. So what I want is this one right here. This Ensemble Pro Server 64-bit. This is the one I want right here. And that's the one I, I check. Now, the cool thing about this one right here is this is the 32-bit one. You can run this one. You can actually run 32-bit VSTs in here. So that's kind of neat. You can also both run these at the same time. Pin them to my task bar. And you just open it up. Just make sure your, your e-licensor key is installed because it'll puke out all this crap stuff if you don't have your e-licensor installed with the USB key. So it's a nice program. Once you get it open, just make sure that your network is working. For example, let's go in here, right click, open network. Just go down to your network icon down here. Open network sharing. Just go to change adapter. But you're not going to change it. Right click on it. Go into properties. Just go in here. Up here it says configure. Well, there it is. And you just want to verify your link speed. You want to make sure that you have a one gigabit. Because sometimes... And these drivers, it may not give you full gigabit. So just make sure that you have full speed. Now on the Logic computer, since this is my master, I do not have to have an e-licensor key. And you'll find it in the VST. There it is, VSL. It'll be under VSL. And what you want, don't pay attention to this. You just want, I usually click the multi-output. Always, I always find I'm using it. There's never a chance I'm not. So I'll explain what the multi-output does. First, so that's where you're going to find the VSL. 
Now, you open it up, it's going to look like you're going to have a brand new screen. It's going to be totally empty. Is you're going to see a little plus mark. Just click on that and it'll create an instance. And then you can just right click and you can say insert plugin. You can pick whatever you want. Now, this is how you get reason to work. You have to connect it first. Let me just say that. You have to have a connection in play first. So what do I mean by that? Well, since we've created an instance, you don't have to worry about creating anything in here. When you open up a new instance, just click the little plus mark. And it'll come up default with Master Bus. And then in here, you can pick your inputs, you can pick your plugins, whatever. Now, check this out. I'm going to name this something like test one, whatever. Now, let's go back over to logic. Let's show you something here. I created an instrument channel. And you pick multi output and it's come in. It's going to look like this. It's going to say not connected. Just hit connect. It's going to take a little bit and then I'll, I'll find. See, there's that test one I just created. And then you just click on it and you say connect. It's connected. You can close that out now. You don't have to mess with it anymore. Now, inputs is you can actually route in your own audio interface from the remote, from the slave PC. Now I'll pick in plugin and I'll pick this one plugin. It's called Rewire VST. Google it, uh, kind of like a homemade VST by a guy. And looks like so. And if we click on it, it'll take you to here. And it'll say Rewire not available because I'm already using it. And, and you get like seven channels. Now the cool thing about this is let's go back and delete this this was just for show make your connection first before you do this rewire VST let me say that again make your connection in logic make sure this says connected before you do the rewire let me say that again connected first in logic before you choose rewire okay why is this important when you go into the rewire right here and you pick it and you choose reason reason will not start unless it's connected it's looking for a connection an audio or something it's looking for something and it'll say some engine out error or something like that if it's not connected so that is why I am so stressing that right now you have to have this connected first let me show you this see how it says connected to my instance it has to be connected first here before you engage this all right made that clear I still one of you guys is gonna mess it up anyway so I'm just saying all right now here's the other cool thing about this is it gives you seven channels or seven buses so right now I think I'm using four and you just click this little thing and you could create another one now the thing that I ran into when I started creating these little buses is you could see that they're kind of all over the place. They don't really match up. What I mean by that is, for example, let's go over, and by the way, when you click on this thing and you click on Reason, it will automatically open Reason for you. And this will open up. And you'll have reason now 
and you'll say rewire device mode. Kind of cool, right? Now, here's the, the interesting thing about this here. If I turn around, I have everything routed. I, I'm not using the master. You can use it if you want to. I just felt like it was just a little bit easier to route the audio this way. Now I have this first one going into one, this first one going into channel two and channel three and four and, you know, so on, so on, so on. Now, and logically, you would think bus one, bus two, bus three, and bus four. Well, not so. What I mean by that is, look at this. Re this is the first channel, out one and two. All right, it makes sense. Now look at this. It says, if you go in here, input channel, it says one and two right there. It's kind of strange like that. But you would think it'd be over there. Whatever. And then this one right here says four. And it's it's totally off. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. It just doesn't match. And then this seven and eight, you know, you'd think it'd be like three, four or something, or five, six. And it's not. It's like this one all the way down here. So just FYI, if you do use this, just know that these buses are going to be all jacked up. I don't know if this is something with the the rewire VST, like it just doesn't really match up that well. It's fine, but you could still, you just have to go through these little inputs and make sure that you have whatever it is that you need to have. You might have to go through a couple of them before it matches up. So once I got all those to match up, then I was able to go into logic here. And, you know, I was able to create my four different channels. Don't worry about all this because I'm not even using them. So if we go into, you get up to 32 channels. And you just click on this little plus mark. Open up Viana. And I said, do the multi-output one. This one right here. It'll give you this little plus mark. You just click that plus mark over and over until you get enough channels. If we go in here to Reason. And if I just play one of these. Let's just play the... The synth acid and it's running right now you can see the the volume coming out but i have it muted on logic if you go into logic it's playing that's playing all right and that one's coming out of channel one and two easy enough right if we turn around you can see that it's coming out of one and two right and it's the first one that makes sense yes now if we go over here this is our kick drum, and I start, hit the run on that one. It should come out three and four. And it shows, see how you can select this three and four right here. Three and four. Perfect. All right. And, but the bus is different. That's where it gets a little confusing because I'm thinking it should be this one right here, the bus three, or at least the next one up, but it's not. So you just kind of have to play with this part right here before you find it. And then if we go into right here, this should play out. See, it's going. All right. So that's good. All right. So then if we go back to reason again, we do the glitch breaks. I'm running through some FX to make it sound even cooler. And you could see that it's coming out five and six. And we go into reason. You could see that it's routed into five and six. But the bus is a little different. It's coming out of bus VST one, four, or whatever. Rewire. A little strange. Now, 
check this out over here. Look how I have the the selection. And you get these little drop downs, and you can create them with these little things right here. You get up to seven. So I've created four of them. I believe that this is MIDI channel one, this is MIDI channel two, three, and four. It does not seem to line up with the, the bus up here. So I'm not really sure. So we did that and let's just check it on logic. It's the glitch. It's right here. Just come in. <coughs> So it's got a little rever reverb in it. And then we got this other one over here. Turn around the rack here. Turn this on. And this is the, the cool percussion drum thing. Go over here. You can see it's on now and it's coming out seven and eight. If we turn around the back, you can see this is routed into seven and eight. Cool. Now, if we go into our logic, you can see the barumba, whatever it's called. And that's working. Great. Turn them all off for a second. And check this out. Now, I could just hit play. They're all muted. And I can take them up one by one. All right, it's playing, and I got my ghost kick on, and it's controlling the uh, the reverb, making a ducking on the reverb. So we'll start with the the uh, glitch sound. See what this sounds like. And then we'll add in the baramba. And then we'll add in the kick. Add in the sun. All right, cool guys, and that is how you get Reason synth from Viana Ensemble into Logic Pro, and I'm using two different computers. If you have any questions or gripes, complaints, whatever, uh, just hit me up in the comments and I'll try to help you out. And again, remember my friends, Big Ruby. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope this helps someone out there. Please subscribe. Give me a like. More of this networking kind of stuff with music. And if you have any questions, concerns, drop me a comment. I usually respond back within the hour or so. Remember my friends, big revenge.